This tutorial is going to be all about spatial diffusion and regions. Uh, first off, we'll talk about regions, then we'll get into spatial diffusion, which is all about the movement of ideas and culture. So first off, regions are things that geographers use uh, to be able to lump people into categories. So how do they, why do they do that? Well, they do it because people do have stuff in common with one another. We know this, it's, a, it's, it's common sense. So a, a cultural region is where a group of people have more in common with one another than they do outside of that cultural region. We can lump the world into some really broad categories here. We can say that Latin America, Anglo-America, uh, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, East Asia, South Asia, North, and North uh, Africa, and Sub-Saharan Africa, and I guess you could say the South Pacific, all have very distinct cultures about them. Now, can you get even more specific? Oh yes! People are very different wherever you go, so you can make lots of sub-regions. This is a good map that uh, tells you the differences in Central Asia. It uh, divided along religious lines. Okay, it's further separated uh, East Asia as well. So you can be more specific with these things. You can even come down to saying, okay, within the can uh, Canada, the United States, and Mexico, you can have all these different cultural regions here. All these people can be said to be uh, different. Um, also, we can have plenty of regions within uh, genetic lines even. You can say, okay, well these people share certain ancestries with one another. Now, regions interact with one another. So, people move because of trade. They share ideas because of trade. Um, they also migrate make war on one another, compete in global sports, and engage in the internet. Okay, Anything that involves communication, uh, trading, the transfer of ideas and people from one region to another is spatial diffusion. That's what spatial diffusion is. The movement of ideas and things and culture from one place to another. So here we can see that people have moved for many different reasons. Uh, yellow means that they moved because they were refugees escaping war. Red means that they moved from the country to the city. Uh, this, these big green arrows means that they moved in search of work. So wherever people in this area here moved, they did. They engaged in spatial diffusion. Okay, when people from North Africa moved to Europe. That means that they took their language, their culture, their ideas with them to Europe, interacting with a different region. Okay, when these people fled southern Sudan to uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania, then they brought their language, their culture, their religion with them. That's spatial diffusion. They moved and took their ideas with them. Okay. Um, trade is another really good uh, way that regions interact with one another. One good example is that ancient Romans, Romans knew about China and the Far East because of the things that were brought. Okay, goods were brought to from China and India uh, to Europe for thousands. That, that trade route had been going on for thousands of years. But had the average Roman citizen ever seen China? Oh no, 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 no. Here is Rome, way over here. Rome and, uh, let's just lump Europe into it too. Now, things were traded with them from the far stretches of the globe. So, supplies and gold and incense and, and uh, fabrics and dyes were brought from these far stretches of the globe all the way over to Europe. Europeans didn't go to Asia, but there were traders, merchants, that would go to back and forth and back and forth so that ideas were uh, exchanged over huge different distances. 
All right, so that is spatial diffusion and regions. Remember, regions don't exist in isolation. There's always going to be trade, migration, war uh, here so that you can have interaction between all of these different cultural regions, creating an exchange of ideas. All right.